Hi, Sean. I just wanted to talk about uh, Senator uh, uh, Santorum's uh, argument with Ron Paul in regards to our foreign policy and the cause of terrorism. Listen, go ahead. I used to agree with Santorum, his position, about five or six years ago. But since listening to Ron Paul, I think I agree more with him now because I have friends who are from the Middle East, and they say that they don't hate the American people. They hate our government, Sean. They hate people like Santorum, Bill Clinton. Well, wait, wait, remember, George we Bush, we are who, the we are we the. Should, hang on a second. We, we are the sure. we the people are the government. It, Sean, because our government doesn't listen to us anymore. They represent a military-industrial complex who makes money from war. Uh, over the last four presidents, we've killed over two million people around this world. That's going to create hostility towards us. And the people who are responsible for this terrorism are the people who are causing them to not like us. And there's look, people I, like Santorum. Let me let me just tell you. Uh, Any time I hear the word military industrial complex, America is responsible. We cause the hatred uh, of this country because of our place, our values in the world. But fundamentally, I think you you're misguided. And let me tell you why. Because you you are discounting the idea and just totally ignoring a reality, a truth, if you will. And the truth is, is that evil exists. You know, if, if we, look, I know that Ron Paul supporters are big Constitution supporters. We, the people of the U.S., in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, uh, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and posterity, do ordain the, and establish the Constitution of the United States of America. Now, if you believe that, and you also believe, as I do and Rick Santorum does, that evil exists, and you have, for example, we didn't cause people to hate us on 9-11. We didn't, if you don't agree with this sick, twisted, ugly caliphate where virgins await you in heaven if you take on the infidels and you engage in jihad, if you don't, you know, they're gonna, they are going to kill anyone that dares to disagree with them. And that's the danger when you put militant Islam together with, you know, a country and a madman uh, like Ahmadinejad and a country like Iran, because they're going to get these weapons of mass destruction. And now we have two choices. They, we can battle them when they have them, which makes the mission that much more difficult. Or we could look at the world and the history of evil, which is a truth and a reality, and we can deal with it long, becomes a, long before it becomes a problem that threatens the liberty and security of every American. So in that sense, I believe it's constitutional, number one, and I believe it's the right thing to do. You're ignoring, you know, what is Pol Pot in the killing fields in Cambodia? How do you describe Hitler's Germany? How do you describe militant Islam? How do you describe fascism? How do you describe communism in the former Soviet Union? You know, how do you describe any totalitarian state that controls the individual, their movement, their freedom, because the state takes on the greater good? John. I'm listening. You, you, you're forgetting when uh, 9-11 happened, or actually the bombing of the trade center, the previous bombing, the fatwa by bin Laden was because we were in his land. If you keep ignoring their position and just say that we're always right and we're always right and we're always right, this is going to go on forever. Raytheon's the... the, the I know, I know. You're the giving me the military-industrial complex of talking of points. You don't think they have... They have a cause to create war and keep us in perpetual war. For Let me ask it? you a question. Let me ask you the question this way. Do you think sure. evil exists? Is Hitler Germany? Is fascism? Is communism? Well, these absolutely. All right. That's so we we really, we'd really well. Hang on. Does evil exist today? Absolutely. But why wait, does wait, the United wait, wait. States government support dictators as well? We supported. All right. Uh, all right. You, 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 you're going off in a hundred different directions. So if the evil does exist. Do you think it's wise to let somebody like Ahmadinejad get a nuclear weapon, or should we stop him before he gets it? What about all the other countries around him? Right, if you're not going to answer shot. my question or follow, you're, you're just you're wrapped up in your talking points. I'm trying to get you to think. Is it better to deal with Ahmadinejad before he gets nuclear weapons or after? I think it's better to, to reach out with an open hand and say, let's well, talk, let's be let's friends, talk. let's trade. All right, hang we on a second. So, so wait a minute. Do what, do you say, what do you say to Ahmadinejad? That has said that he wants to wipe Israel and the United States off the face of the earth. How do you get along with him? What are you going to say to him? You're sitting at the meeting next week at the United Nations. He gives you a private meeting with him. What would you say to him? I would 
say to him to lower his rhetoric at the same time, why would he say that? Yeah. Why would he say that? Let me ask John? you, do you think if you would have sat is across... Israel, is Israel not uh, involved in doing certain things that were done to them during the Holocaust? Do you t- right, now, right now they're treating uh, people in, in their go. region similar to how they were treated before. Yeah. Do you think if you sat down with Hitler and you said lower the rhetoric and try and get along and let's have free trade, do you think it would have worked on Hitler whose, whose work was to annihilate Jews and innocent people? Do you think, you're, you, think you would have been able to convince Hitler? Well, if, if, <laughs> if you're going to bring up Hitler, Sean, let's talk about uh, well, wait the a minute. family who was involved with Hitler. Yeah. Press on Bush right. gave Hitler... Uh, I got to go, Joe. I just I tried, folks. I really gave it my best shot. Say I'm honored <laughs> to talk to you. Uh, I'm you not a big shot, but go uh, ahead. That the totalitarian state uh, that controls the individual, are you somewhat denying that the American nation state has these same totalitarian uh, tendencies? I mean, it's no different. We just live in a different epoch in a different era. I'm afraid. I, look, my buddy Mark Levin a while back wrote a, a huge, massive bestseller called Liberty and Turner. Uh, right. Tyranny. I, I've read it, and I believe that your buddy Mark Levin in himself has these totalitarian uh, tendencies. I, 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 the, I believe that you can serve Oh, stop it. Now, listen to me. I'm giving you my answer. I think there's a soft tyranny emerging and supported by liberals like yourself that want the government to control every aspect of our life as each government security or what what you perceive as security is granted to you, you give up a piece of your liberty and freedom. Go ahead. Great. I agree, my friend, but I, I believe that your conservative philosophy and ideology is the complete opposite of that. You guys, as you guys want, as Levin even says in his book, ordered liberty. But who does the ordering, Sean? Is Listen, it be if, if anybody's is it going to be is it going to be you know, the governor of your state? I mean, what I believe is that we need to move past this idea of of the state altogether. I think that's why Ron Paul's candidacy is so uh, so encouraging because he oh, okay. Then we'll have the, but, is, but that would result in chaos. The whole reason for the Constitution, in part, is remember we the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice. Ensure domestic tranquility. In other words, you're basically sounding like, well, there's no need for government. And government, Thomas Paine said, in its best state is but a necessary evil. Its worst state, an intolerable one. Uh, I'm arguing to you that limited government, the people that are oppressive right now, are on the left. Those that won't let, for example, companies explore, drill, refine. Those that won't allow nuclear power plants. Those believe in redistribution. It's all a morality of theirs. And they're ramming it down our throat. That's coming from the left in the country. Bigger government, redistribution, higher debt, deficits. 